Well, it's only gone and passed an MOT, believe it or not. One pass certificate, amazing. And it's only got one advisory, which is an oil leak, which I think is me yesterday changing the oil. I think that either the seal for that new filter housing uh, isn't very good, or I've just not tied it up enough. Bar of that oil leak, it will be a clean MOT, which I'm amazed about. I was expecting advisories for a couple of tyres because they are getting thin, and I was expecting advisories for um, slight lip on a couple of the discs, and the pads are a little thin. I also wasn't sure if it will pass the emissions because it's just sat for months and months and months with that new exhaust clamp on that I did yesterday. I wasn't sure how well that had sealed up, so I was expecting, well potentially, I thought it might fail on that. And this is the first time it's been properly in inspected for a roadworthiness point of view. So I was wondering, and all sorts of horror stories, potentially it could have been, they could have noticed that the chassis slightly bent or something like that, but it, they, it doesn't appear to be the case. One thing they did say is that that slightly bent strengthening bar underneath at the rear should be flat which I, I was wondering it seems odd that, that only one of them has got a little kink in it they are it is supposed to be flat according to him so he thinks that maybe it's been jacked up uh, somewhere where it shouldn't have been or it's gone over something or had a little knock and, and bent it but he can't really understand it either because it's kind of kinked downwards rather than upwards but anyway it's not an advisory it isn't anything to do with the MOT so if it hadn't been for this oil leak it would have a, a clean MOT so I'm really pleased with that I didn't expect well I didn't expect to get an advisory for oil leaks because I thought I'd we'd sorted all that out but the advisories that I thought it may get it hasn't so I really can't complain and it's driving quite nicely. There's, I mean, it handles quite well. Uh, I thought maybe one of the other advisories I'd get would be bushes at the back, because there's a slight knock here and there on the rear suspension, and there's a little bit of grumbling from the front when you go around corners, which could potentially be the suspension uh, top mounts, bearings in the top mounts. But again, they've not been, a, uh, noted as an advisory, the suspension that has passed with flying colours. So all in all, this little car is doing better than I was expecting it to do for its first MOT and the one advisory that it has got is not something I was expecting. So I need to get back underneath it and have a look at that uh, oil seal for the filter housing see if maybe I need to go under a little bit more tension or maybe I'll see if I can find the old filter give it uh, the old seal and uh, give that a wash and put that back on I've got a feeling I've binned it uh, but if this seal isn't any good that they've supplied new maybe I'll just have to try and find it and reuse the old one but yes that's really not the end of the world. I, I'm fairly certain I know where that oil leak is coming from. So, bar that, we have an MOT with really nothing to know. Nothing to know. So, it lives to fight another day. So well done, this little car. So now that it's MOT'd, we'll have a look at some of the the work that was done on the receipt that I've got, work that I didn't do. This was replaced, this is the old thermostat housing. The thermostat was stuck open, that had completely seized open. Better than seizing shut, I suppose. So that had to be changed. That is buried all the way down underneath there. So all of this duct work, all of this air pipe work and everything would have had to have come back out so I have a new thermostat and housing now, which is something I didn't plan on having, but it's 
it's a nice thing to have. So that's the old thermostat and housing. That's for the bin. This was the source of the water leak. This hose goes underneath all of this. It runs kind of underneath the inlet manifold and the throttle body and again is a absolute nightmare to get to. Uh, in the end I just bit the bullet and paid to have this done because what I didn't want to do is strip all of this out, take all of this off, by which point the car obviously won't run and then find that for whatever reason I couldn't get it all back together or there was another issue which meant that the car would have had to have gone to a workshop and then it's stuck in a quite a narrow garage with very poor access for any kind of recovery or anything like that so I played it safe and decided to have it to have that work done. I was most of the way towards all of this before when I had all this air filter and everything off to give it a clean but uh I didn't fancy it. I didn't want to risk it. The other bit of work that was done was this replaced, which was the timing chain tensioner. This was the source of the oil leak around the back of the engine. Again, this is buried underneath the throttle body around the back here. So the seals here leak, and I wanted this changed anyway because I've got no history with the car. By the looks of it, that kind of gold colour indicates to me that that's got a fair few miles in it. But more importantly, you can do that quite easily with between your thumb and a finger and you can push that tensioner all the way in so that basically means it was applying virtually no tension to the timing chain the reason these one of the reasons these cars have a reputation for being unreliable is the timing your timing goes out the timing goes out for several reasons one of them being people don't want to change this tensioner because it's such a hard job to get to so the tensioner runs out of tension like this one has doesn't apply enough attention to the chain and the chain skips teeth on the pulleys which are buried inside there and then the car goes out of time won't start runs rough etc etc or even worse with the chain not having enough tension applied against it it starts to rattle it can damage the plastic chain guide which again is under the rocker cover here the bits of that fly off get smashed up everywhere and fall into the valves and i mean we were a recipe for disaster so this timing chain tensioner has served two purposes a it has stopped the oil leak and b it's putting the correct tension on the chain now so that's something else i don't have to worry about the only thing that this has meant which i, I did really want to do was i haven't had a complete flush of the cooling system the coolant that is in the radiator well, water, I suppose, because most of it had come out anyway with the with the leaks and constantly having to top up. So it has got nice pink coolant in there now, which was done at the mechanics, uh, because obviously most of the cooling system from the expansion tank down to the thermostat has been taken apart to change the hose and thermostat. According to him, there was no sludge inside it. It was all in pretty good condition. So that he, in his opinion, the system probably doesn't need flushing. So I'm going to live with that for the time being. If I keep this car for any length of time, maybe next year I will do a coolant flush. So that was it. That was the, uh, the results of the work that is on that receipt, which again was more expensive than I wanted. Just kicked over a tin of brake cleaner. But what it means now is that I've got a car finally with nice fresh pink coolant in the expansion tank. Engine needs another little wash now because it's got a bit dusty and dirty but aside from this mystery oil leak underneath after the MOT which I really don't know uh this is okay so what I might what I might do actually is go and tax it insure it go and get some fresh petrol in it and then when I come back I'll have a look and see if there's any oil appeal underneath right so I've just got back from the petrol station Going to fill it up, so it's a round trip of about five miles, I suppose. And there is there is a bit of an oil leak. There we go. Look, there's something dripping there. And the question is, where is that coming from? It's not that set. 
it's not that oil filter housing. Because that there is fresh, and that's clean oil as well. And I have just done an oil change, so it's coming from up there. Although, what's up there, I don't know. The rocker cover's weeping again, maybe. Definitely nothing over here. There is a very minor little leak somewhere up there. I know not where. Maybe it is that. Uh, uh, that would just come round to the bottom and drip in the bottom, which it isn't. So, okay, I don't know. I don't know. It's certainly not bad. So for the time being, I'm calling this done. It's had another quick clean today. The wheel nut caps are on. Hasn't been polished or waxed because it's going to be getting dark very soon. It's getting a bit chilly. And also, my clothes are filthy because I was walking a massive Rottweiler in a field earlier and getting in and out of the car and I've already got that dirty. But you've got to draw a line somewhere, so I'm drawing a line today and saying this is now ready to go on the road. Taxed, insured, MOT'd. And I'll see if it gets me home. If it does and it proves to be reliable, maybe in the spring I'll do another video and I will properly finish off the detailing. But for the time being, I've got to draw a line somewhere. These videos are never ending and I'm getting tired of doing them. So um, th this is now taxed, MOT'd, insured, clean, tidy. Tidied up with a couple of little scuffs on the mirror there. I've just re-dyed that. You can see some uh, spots there and marks where it's just dried in the sun rather than being properly towel dried. So it's just about serviceable in there now. Do some floor mats, but again, I'll wait to see if it's going to be reliable before I spend any more money on it. So, at the moment, we're calling this done. The engine bay is in good condition. Right, well, I'm going to call this done for the first time since I've had it. It's got full coolant, full screen wash, nice blue in the tube there for the screen wash. Engine mounts are clean, rocker cover's clean, brake fluid bottle is clean, all down there with the inner wings are clean. That is a lot better than when it turned up. Nothing living in there anymore. Uh, nothing living in that one either. So all in all, I'm calling this a day under here. That is more than serviceable. 
Nice new alternator. Yeah, I can live with that, I think. And the uh, one that's got that manky thing off of it, that soundproofing, and everything else has been cleaned. So, yes, that is a, uh, a clean engine bay. Finally. All the lights work. It's clean enough. Bear in mind, this time tomorrow, there's going to be torrential rain from later on this evening uh, through all day tomorrow. So there's really no point going mad with it. The coolant bottle is still leaking. That's annoying. That's not coolant. Uh, sorry, not coolant. Windshield wash, screen wash. That's leaking. No, it wasn't leaking earlier until I topped it up. So I think there's only a little tiny leak and it's just the pressure of the full, that, that full volume is causing it to leak. So I think that's gonna be a new pump. They're fairly cheap, so I'm not too bothered about that. So for the time being, this is it. If it's still running by the spring, I may well do another, another polish and full detail. There's plenty of detailing videos on YouTube. No one needs to see another one. Especially one that's not going to come out brilliantly anyway because of the blemishes on the car that are never going to go away short of a full respray. And one of the little bits that was wrong is the rear inner arch there has been tidied up. This one in here as well was broken and a bit loose. It's all nice and solid now, or as solid as it's going to be. It doesn't look great because there's silicon in there, keeping that some strength, but I thought I'd rather have it strong than uh, look good. It doesn't really matter, touch in there anyway. So from buying this in May to end of October, it's taken to get this into this condition. And it looks all right from a distance, really and it's road legal and hopefully going to be road worthy. I'll find out when I drive it home because that's about 50 miles on the motorway so we'll see what it's like. What's the car worth? Bear in mind there's no service history and the bodywork's not fantastic when you look up close. Uh, age and mileage, two grand I reckon. What have I spent on it? Three grand. So the moral of the story is, would I buy a Category U car from Copart again? Absolutely not. Wouldn't touch him with a barge pole. Uh, I have to say, I can't really say anything against Copart. Their terms and conditions make it very clear that you buy as a trade and not as a member of the public, so normal consumer rights, etc. don't apply to you. Their terms and conditions are about 100 pages long and they boil down to, fuck you, it's your problem. So I didn't go in with my shut. I said right from the off that this was a massive gamble. Um, do I regret it? No, not really. If this proves to be tidy, then well, reliable, then it's, it's an all right little banger. So... And I've kind of mostly enjoyed it. It's been a bit frustrating here and there, but I've mostly enjoyed it. I definitely wouldn't buy a car sight unseen off the internet again. Was it worth 700 quid when I bought it? Yeah, probably. Um, but was it really worth what I've spent on it? No. That's a, a resounding no. But with a bit of luck, I've got a... Hopefully, reliable air conditioned convertible for next summer. Uh, that I've put back on the road by a little bit of work down at the My Local Mechanics, pretty much single handedly. So, um, I can live with that, I think. I can live with that. Bearing in mind, I'm not a mechanic at all, not by any stretch of the imagination. I can live with the fact that this really doesn't look that bad. 
Doesn't smell too bad inside anymore. So I'll live with it. I'll live with it. But it's certainly a grand over what it's worth. I've, I've spent on it what it's worth and half as much again. So from any kind of economic point of view, that's mental. And that's not considering any time that I've put into it. How many hours has this cost me in terms of time? Honestly, I don't know. A hundred, probably, easily. So minimum wage, whatever minimum wage is these days, don't really know. So minimum, if you add minimum wage onto it, let alone the, the rate that a skilled body shop and mechanic would have charged. I mean, it do, well, it doesn't bear thinking about this. Uh, if I'd paid, well, if I paid mechanics and body shop experts to do it, it would be in much better condition. But you'd be looking at five grand instead of three, and it would still only be worth two because it's a complete lack of service history. It is basically still a, a salvage car. It is something that was going to get scrapped and it will always be that. It's clearly had an extremely hard life. And uh, that's that limits what it's worth. But other than that, if you don't think about that and just try and enjoy it as a, hopefully, reliable cabriolet, then I'm just going to leave it at that and we'll see in the spring if uh, it's still running. Maybe I'll tidy up the other little odds and ends, but for now, this car's done. Well, a quick guided tour of what's underneath the scuttle cover. Uh, load of shit. Load of shit. Load of shit. And load of shit and some stuff that looks like it might even be growing. So, yeah. Time to get rid of all this.